Now, Carol, when I was young, my grandparents grew raspberries. Oh, now you're just raspberries, canes, and loganberries. Now you're just showing <laughs> What about you? We grew a lot. We had everything from oranges, apricots, plums, and nectarines. I remember being locked out after school, but mum wouldn't worry. Oh, the kids will have a snack, no problem. Now, if they sort of come back home, they have to sit on the balcony and look at the... They get nothing. They now. get nothing. They look at the Weber and all the outdoor barbecue, and that's well, it. Speaking of looking, Oh. Is that a camel? Would you drink a camel milk latte? Sure, why not? Yeah, okay. And we're here. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Karen. Richard. Nice to meet you. Hi, Richard. Hello. Welcome to my uniform. Wow, thank you. thank you for having us here. Should we head through and have yeah. a look? Yeah, Please. yeah, let's do. <laughs> So, Sammy, tell us a little bit about the sustainable educational programs that you run here at Mayuna. Yeah, so we've got sustainable education programs for uh, primary, upper primary school kids. Um, and then for the younger kids, we just teach them more about farming, about where their food comes from. And we also have sustainable education programs for adults as well, where we do like beekeeping, composting, growing vegetables. It's a great cross-section like? of programs. Yeah. So we've got community gardens at the front of the farm um, and they're managed by local residents who have got garden plots here as well as um, local primary schools got a garden plot and they use what they've grown here to teach the school kids about where their food comes from back at school. Is it quite extraordinary sometimes when you, you get the kids through and they, they start to understand all the penny drops as mm, to where you know, potatoes yeah. come from? Yeah, it's fantastic because we are in a suburban environment here so a lot of the kids just haven't seen where their food mm. comes from and don't get to be out and about. Mm. But to tell you the truth, Sammy, I can't wait to have a bit of a forage yeah. amongst your garden because I'm cooking a fabulous tuna salad today yeah. and then I'm following up with some carrot cake. Well, we've got all the ingredients you'll need in the oh, garden, so we'll go have a look. <laughs> you know, Rich, it's hard to believe we're only 40 minutes from the city here at Myuna Farm. And you've got Danny Non Creek on one side. Suburbia on the other side. And suburbia on the other. You know what I love the best, almost always, other than the rooster? <laughs> Working farm. <laughs> is the garden plots and yeah. just seeing all those vegetables flourishing, especially the carrots. So I thought, why not make a gorgeous gluten-free carrot, carrot cake? cake? We're going to make little, like, little cakes. Yes, that's what I was getting to. We're not making a giant <laughs> cake. We're going to make little ones. Yeah. So I'll start off by grating four carrots. Mm. And I'm going to start with... The White Wings gluten-free self-raising flour. Yep, 150 grams in there, Rich. Yep. And I'm just going to grate the carrots quite coarsely, and I'm working on the wet ingredients. That's the great thing about a carrot cake. Mix the dry, put the wet in another yep. bowl, and then you combine them. So we've got cinnamon, clove and ginger. Yep, teaspoon yep. of each or so. Add a pinch of salt, Rich. Okay. And then follow in with the muscovado sugar. You get around 100 grams there. Okay. Which is a lovely brown sugar. It has great caramel flavour. Mm, it's sort it. of it's unrefined as far as and lots of sort of molasses y flavours. Yeah. yeah. Oh. There's an education session happening right now. <laughs> Alright, there's the sugar. Okay, that's it for your dry ingredients, that's I think. It. Just we'll do a little, mix little it bit. together. Mix it together. You know what? These carrots are real carrots. You can yeah. feel that they've just come straight from the ground because they're I don't know, they've got an aroma. No, <laughs> you just get into them. Mm. So four carrots coarsely grated. Follow in with some pineapple. What's a carrot cake these days without a little bit of pineapple? Straight from the tin, it's half a cup. Two eggs. Ooh. Here, you can crack one, Rich. Beautiful. 90 mils of vegetable oil. I've got one more thing. Mm. Carrot cake or the carrot flavour works so well with orange. So we will mm. just zest a little bit of that. Yeah, I stopped eating cake because it always involves, for me, it's the golden triangle. Eggs. Eggs, yes. yes. Listen, flour, usually some type of dairy at the end of it. 
There's a bit of egg replacement stuff that's out there. You can use flaxseed. Oh. Flaxseed itself. You can use um, gelatin. Banana's another one. So does that sort of mean that you experiment a fair bit and do well, a that's little one bit of the things, Yeah. That's one of the things when you have intolerance is that you actually spend a lot of time changing a recipe and experimenting. I suppose once you're experimenting, mm. you actually stumble across something that works perfectly mm. for you. Yeah. I'm also going to add some walnuts, sunbeam walnuts, and then we've also got some sunbeam sultanas. And then literally we'll mm. stir that together and then combine it with that mix. So Rich, why don't you get yeah. busy doing some greasing? I've just got a tray here. And it's a literally, I think, just rub the coconut oil mm. on the inside and then line it with a little strip of paper through Dumped. the middle. And then the little cakes will just pop out. Now, I'm just going to combine the... Actually, we'll go dry into the wet. Like this. You can smell that spice. Yes. I like to be a little bit heavier on the spice because I think that you end up with a really warm, sort of rich flavour yeah. in the carrot cake. So, Rich, once you've added the flour, or the dry mix into the wet mix, yeah. you get an instant batter that seems a bit stiff, but cooks up a treat. Okay, if you want to grab a spoon too, we're yeah. just going to pop these in like that. But because these are quite a mini take, we're going to fill the mould right yeah. up. Just top up these last ones, Rich. Okay. Alright. Let's get these in the oven. So they'll just take 20 minutes at 180 degrees. I'm going to share them later with our friends. Ooh. Hang on out. What you doing? Yeah. Okay, we ready by now. Cakes are done. Okay, you can smell that spice. Beautiful. Now mm. the great thing about this is we can just take them out because we put the little papers inside and then we can ice them. We're going to use Liddell's lactose-free cream cheese. So right. one full pack, Rich. Yep. Do you reckon that's enough? Maybe. Uh, There's never enough cream cheese. Put some on the side. Have Maybe some. do a packet and a half. All right, OK. And we're also going to add a touch of orange juice just to reinforce that orange flavour in the cakes. OK. All right. So mash that up. Yeah. A little bit of orange. A little bit of orange. I can sift some icing sugar for you in there if you want. Okay. Let's go. Let's just see. Just sifting it so we don't get the occasional lump. And it's just a little bit of sweetness I'm adding. You could add muscovado sugar as well, but I'm wanting to just stay true to that. Um, lovely white, yeah. luscious colour of cream cheese. Now, can I bother you for the pistachios? Pistachios. Just for a little splash of green on top once we've iced them. Okay. That's looking great. There we go. So what I had, what I had the vision for was a big splodge of Liddell's lactose-free cream cheese. What do you think? Mama? Pretty good. These will be gone in no time at all. A couple more to go. All right. Now we can put on the um, pistachios, just like this. Oh, nice. Putting the pistachio on top of the cream Brings cheese. Brings out the lovely green. It does, but it also just dresses them up a little. Right. And then, Rich, you know I love orange. And I think it's going to finish that beautifully. There are gluten-free, tiny little carrot cakes with lactose-free cream cheese icing. I can't wait to eat these. just flourishing in the community garden There were here. so many vegetables of so many different kinds. It was just, I miss having a veggie patch. Have you, you should ever... get one. Mm. Yeah, I have one, but it's bare often because yeah. I'm still looking for my green finger. I have too many possums. But I'm very good at herbs, and herbs is exactly what I need to make a tuna salad come to life. 
with a little secret uh, gluten-free garnish as well okay. a bit later on. All right. Because everyone makes a tuna salad, but I think it's all about the dressing quality of the tuna, of course, and we're using Serena chili tuna today. Awesome. And the way you cut the vegetables as well. And I think we eat with our eyes and also we love to taste, but it's it's got to be exciting at the same time. So if you cut your vegetables the same way all the time... It gets boring. Boring. It's so boring. like it's when you're learning, maybe cut the tomatoes a different way today. Yep. Oh, well, yes, oh. yes, yes. Yes, get into yes. it. I'm going to take an onion and cut that up. How many of these? This many? Uh, yes. So just cut them into a wedge, a wedge? Want, which is a pretty familiar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the novelty, okay? All right. Yeah. And I'm going to cut the onions just across like that. So when it comes to making a dressing for something like this, I sort of aim for two thirds oil, one third of the acid or the mm. vinegar, whatever it may be. So a few shakes of sherry vinegar, and also, Rich, can you juice a half a lemon in Absolutely. there as well? I'm going to add some salt. Generous pinch. Yep, go yep. ahead with the squeeze. So what we're doing is building the dressing in the bottom of the bowl on the onions mm -hmm. and they'll soften really oh, nicely nice and take tip. out that aggressive sort of flavour of the red onion. Lots of black pepper. I'm going to do the cucumbers next. You continue with those no. tomatoes. Okay. Now, Rich, my nana used to do the cucumber in this fashion where she'd run the fork around the outside, and so did my mum. Okay. And you end up with a bit of a pattern in your cucumber. Cool. And then, Rich, when you slice this up, I cut them in a little bit of a bigger chunk and you get like a wheel. I mean, I know that everyone takes tuna salad to work. It's a bit of a, like a, yes, mu a must they do, do, but I just throw in some more rocket leaves or some green leaves the next day and then take another can of tuna and that's lunch. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thrifty. <laughs> well, it's just very hard to eat when I'm out of the house. So Thrifty. I have yeah. to do that. I have to it's take my own lunch. Yeah. We'll give that a bit of a toss. Oh, no, we'll add some herbs. Some of these herbs from the garden. You yeah. can add any herbs you like, really. So today we're going to do mint and some basil. Big... And maybe even some of these fennel tops that I picked. Ooh, a little magpie behind us. Have we? Yeah, look. Huh. Yeah. He likes tuna salad too. <laughs> All right. So, in with the fennel. Lots of fresh mint, a little bit of basil. Really, these fresh herbs yeah. just jazz up a tuna salad like nothing I mean, there else. are so many other vegetables that you could throw oh, into this salad. you're reminding me of the capsicum I picked. I'm just going to chop some of this pepper up. It doesn't get much fresher. You can hear no. this freshness in this. Mm. Dropping those on. So, Rich, if you could just give that a really gentle toss through and I'll get onto that right. gluten-free, crispy garnish, I Ooh. promise, for this salad that, again, takes a tuna salad from an everyday thing to a very special thing. I think this is going to be very, very, very special. Karen, look at this. Look at this colour. Oh, I did forget one thing, Rich. Uh -huh. A little bit of Tabasco, if you could. With the gluten-free wraps, instead of using them the traditional way, I'm cutting them up into very thin pieces and I'm going to fry them off. I've got a large fry pan over high heat. Okay. And you can see there's are shreds now. And then just drop the wrap into the oil. Yep. And you can hear it just crisping up. Sometimes I would season that up in the pan, yeah. but because we're going to use the Table of Plenty Dukkha, if you want to open that yep. for me. And Rich, see how it's lovely and golden brown? Straight onto... It's, crispy. it's sort of like a crispy noodle in a way. Yeah. Again, adding the Dukkha, which is a mix of hazelnuts and sesame seeds and cumin and all sorts of bits and pieces over the top of the wrap quite generously and do it while it's still hot so it takes on the flavour. Yeah, you can smell the you can smell all the spices rising. Okay Rich, let's get that into that bowl there. Alright, right, here we go. Looking beautiful. Those peppers from the community garden are sensational. Now for the Serena chili tuna. I mean, obviously, you could toss this all through. Mm. It's the same result of flavour, but um, we're building it up to look really pretty as well. Just piling the tuna on top. And then the piece de resistance, Cole's gluten-free flatbread, <laughs> spiced with the Table of Plenty Dukkha. Look at that, that's awesome. sensational. 
Even if I do say so myself. It's pretty good. And then a little bit more, because I can't help myself. Right. Do you want some of the fennel flour on top? Yeah, go for it. This is such a little ode to the um, veggie garden that we just picked this from. Oh, beautiful, Rich. And a little bit of the dressing over the top. That's a complete winner for me. Mm -hmm. Hope that our friends at my Unifarm are going to love it. Oh, no. Okay, Karen. Yes. It was my nephew's birthday about four weeks ago, and my sister had made this chocolate ripple cake, a classic sort of 19, sort of 80s cake. Definitely. I haven't seen one since then. But it was filled with cream and chocolate ripple biscuits. Mm -hmm. So I wanted today I wanted to do this play on that and use Cole's simply gluten-free chocolate chip cookies with a little bit of jam, finishing off with yoghurt, sheep's milk yoghurt. Oh, I love the use of the yoghurt, because that would, like, add a lovely sharpness to contrast against the sweetness of the cookie. Yeah. It's quite a simple thing to put together, if I remember correctly. Look, a child could do this, Karen. Well, then you and I should be able to manage <laughs> Pull this it. off. <laughs> very, very simple. Start off with jam, chocolate chip cookies, some yoghurt, and what we do is we're just going to build small stacks. Uh-huh. A little bit of that. And the jam really it just acts as glue, doesn't it? Yeah, which is sort of, yeah, it's basically got to glue itself together. Like that? No. No? No. No, no. A little oh. bit of yogurt. I've skipped a step. You've skipped a step, and then that one. I on see. On top there, like that. Because the secret to a chocolate ripple cake or a style of cake like this is to just soften the biscuits enough to be able to treat them like a cake, in mm. a way. So that's what the yoghurt is probably doing here. So building stacks, very simple. I can remember when I finished my HSC and my mum had spent days and days and days cooking and she got... She boned a quail, then she boned a chicken. And she made a cake out of it? No. Oh. <laughs> this is just another story. And then she boned a, a duck and then put it all inside each other and did the big roast off. And a then tudakin. A tudakin. And it was beautiful. And we had a very special cake. We had a crock and bush ah, after that. Now you're talking about yeah. cakes. Well, well I do remember through the 80s, it was the Women's Weekly Birthday Cookbook. And I think my mum made at least half of those. But my favourite was the pool. Or was it a cricket pitch? I can't remember. I think it was a pool with green jelly and you had stick chocolate biscuits around the mm -hmm. outside and a little fake, um, like, uh, it's an above ground pool sort of set up with a little fake ladder of licorice and stuff going wow. on the inside. Yeah, she got fancy. But no chocolate ripple cake. No. Okay, right. I've, put, I've stuck my barrels together. Yeah. So what you do need okay. is you need a little bit... You need cement, yogurt need cement little, on the bottom. You cement down there so they all sort of stand Ooh. up. Okay, and then you put the... like this? Yeah. Standing up? Yep, standing up. Kids would love to put this together, I think. Yeah. I suppose this it's opens the door to kids who have intolerance like mm. gluten. They can now have this fabulous cake, retro cake from mm. the 80s, is now being modernised. Now, this is it. All you're doing is doing this. Smother it all in yeah. sheep's milk yoghurt. There we are. Very That's... delicately. Look at those yeah. skills. How's that? Right. I might even... You might even be able to do this for I me. can help you if you want. Yeah, I think you should. Maybe I'm going to go. Richard, I think our friends are really going to enjoy sampling this particular little treat. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to eating it because I know that I can. That nearly finishes it, I reckon. That looks really well coated now. What happens? Well, what we've got to do is we've just got to put it into the fridge until it's firm. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to dress it with some more yoghurt and then over the top, I'm just going to sprinkle some toasted flaked almonds and it'll be ready to serve. Beautiful, Rich. Yeah. Just as I remember it. <laughs> I hope 
you guys like this, mate? I better not burn the sausages, mate. Looks delicious, Court. All right. Rich, that looks fabulous. And there you have it, a beautiful gluten-free chocolate chip ripple cake. Our friends are going to love it. Oh, come on, let's show them. Hey, guys. Hey guys. Michael, oh, Courtney, guys. Sammy. Hi, hey. oh, yes. oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Paul's gluten-free chocolate chip ripple cake. Mm, that's oh. good. Pretty happy with yeah. that one. Yeah. 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 Serena tuna salad with Cole's gluten-free wrap on top and then a little bit of carrot cake. Nice. Right. And what have you got so, going yeah. Roast beef with chimichurri. Um, some beautiful gluten-free snacks. I love them. Yeah. Well, see and Court, like you've that. made this looks uh, delicious. As a yeah, kale saw. Well, haven't we done well? Hey, haven't you guys got the gluten-free expo coming up soon? Uh, we yeah, do, I think, yeah. 8th and 9th of October yeah. at Melbourne Exhibition Centre. Yeah. It's lots of fun. It's like a food and wine expo, but it's all gluten-free. Uh, me and Michael are on the cold stage cooking up gluten-free treats for everyone. You know, guys, it sounds amazing because it isn't about what you can't eat, it's about what you can eat. Exactly. So that's yeah. what Intolerant Cooks is all about, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have lots of food to cook and we hope to see lots of people there. Bye-bye. Yeah. See ya. Sure.